After you verify that your capacitor is good, you can move on. So if you think your compressor is bad, first of all, of course, verify that you have power going to the unit. So for example, if I plug my disconnect back in and put my meter leads on the line voltage coming in from the whip into the contactor. Now, uh, be careful because th this is now live. Don't stick your fingers on anything and get electrocuted, but I put one screw on one end of the contactor right there and one on the other screw. Oh, and by the way, let's focus on my meter. If you have your meter set to your ohm setting or a continuity setting and you try to check 240 volts, your meter is probably going to get fried and then you need a new meter. So make sure you have it set to voltage when you're checking your voltage. Anyways, you put your leads on those two screws. Bam. As you can see, I do have 240 volts. By the way, it's never 240 volts even. It's always going to be some off reading. Like in my case, it's 247, sometimes 248, 244, and that's normal. So anyways, I know I have power. So once the thermostat is calling for cooling, this little plunger will pull in, let the voltage through, and both my fan and compressor will turn on if everything is working. So for example, if you use an insulated nut driver, you can press that little plunger in. Be wary of this because it is 240 volts. If you touch something metal, you can get shocked. It'll probably melt your screwdriver. So very carefully, press the little plunger in and see what happens. In my case, both the compressor and the fan turned on. But in your case, something may be different. I mean, if your compressor is bad, your fan may turn on, but nothing will happen down there. Or if your AC is tripping the breaker right when it turns on, then you most likely do have a problem with the compressor. But anyway, moving on to the main event is the compressor. You can check it out. You can ohm it out at the wires coming from the compressor here in the electrical section. I don't really like to do that because it's better if you open up the compressor um, electrical section there where the plugs are, where the pins, I mean where the connectors go into the pins because sometimes there's a burnt wire there and I've even seen mice build nests in there. So it's better if you just open that up and take a look at it. Maybe it's just a broken connector that's causing a short. So we won't check it here but just so you know it is possible. Um, I will actually open up the top here and go from the top and check my compressor that way. And of course before you do anything, remember how I pulled the push the disconnect back in? Make sure you always verify that you do not have power going to the unit. If you touch a bare wire, it could mean death by electrocution for you. So I know I have a power off. In fact, I could take my voltage pen and once again, just double check. There's no line voltage coming into my unit. My thermostat's off inside the house and uh, turning off your breaker inside, your AC breaker is a good idea too. So I don't have power. I can safely proceed to take off the top here. Usually it'll just be a couple of screws holding your fan. Sometimes this whole entire top will come off. In my case, it's just this grill or grate that comes off. Just gotta pluck these little plastic things off, which reveals my 5 16 screws. Okay, I got all the screws out. And then you can lift the top off, and here are the wires going to the fan. Sometimes it won't give you a lot of slack at all. In that case, you just kind of have to push it off to the side right here. Or you can go from the inside at, at your electrical section, and then push the wires through a little bit so you have more slack to work with. In my case, I can pretty easily, as you can see, flip mine over. And I will just lay my fan motor on the side over here just so it's out of the way like that and then we have access to our compressor right in the bottom sometimes if you get lucky your unit will have the compressor on the side and when you open up your electrical section it's just right there very accessible for you for me it takes a little bit more work I have to get down in there and look at it that way but anyways find where the wires go into your compressor so in my case it's right here It'll either be two clips on the sides that you have to depress so you can pull the cover off. In mine, I just have to pull the cover upwards and the whole thing comes off. Once again, I know I already went over this a million times, but I would rather have you not dead. Check to make sure you don't have voltage down there. My meter can also act as a voltage pen when I press this button. 
no voltage. So I know I'm safe to dig around in there. So I'm gonna take off all three wires down there and make sure you remember where you're pulling off those wires from because you do need to put them back on correctly. And before I start pulling them off, it's kind of hard to get in there with the camera, but I'll just show you what it looks like before I pull it off. Okay, so we're down at my compressor pins. As you can see, there's three wires going there. It's uh, orange, a red, and a black. Your colors may be different. If you want, you can look on the wiring diagram if you have one on the back of your door. Um, but anyways, sometimes it'll be a plug where all three wires just go into it and the whole thing plugs in. Look for any burnt or broken wires here. If you do have some burnt or broken wires, a very slick fix for that is a quick lug compressor repair kit. I'll put that in the description of this video if that is indeed your problem. But anyways, you found those three wires. Now what you want to do is disconnect all three of them. But before you do that, make sure you note where each wire goes so you're able to put them back on correctly. So what I did is I took a permanent marker and I just wrote right there, orange, black, red. That way when I put the wires back on, I know exactly where to put them. All right, so I finally got the three wires off and mine was a perfect case of wires connectors that would just not come off the pins. So I had a flashlight here. I was using an inspection mirror with some needle nose to try to get them off. Everything was just kind of being a pain in the butt. So finally I just dove in there and took them off with my needle nose down there while I was looking at it because it was just ridiculously hard to get them off. So now that we got the wires off, we can continue our check. And what I like to do is draw myself a little picture of the compressor. So let's say here's your compressor. Inside of it, there's three electrical windings. Um, by the way, usually the compressor will have an overload. So if the compressor gets too hot, this internal overload will open up and interrupt the circuit and turn off the compressor. But then basically you got, we'll call that your run winding. And this will be your start winding. So sorry for the bad art here. But anyways, this will be your common winding. This, let's say, will be a run, and this will be our start. So three windings, those are the three pins that you have at the compressor. So now that I have the wires off, I can just show you quick the three pins so you know what I'm talking about. So those are the three pins, and I'm gonna be putting my meter leads on all three pins and measuring resistance on them. Okay, so right now I'm going from orange to black, where the orange and black wires were, those two pins. And as you can see, I'm getting fluctuating readings. That means my leads are not on there all the way. And I can't see clearly what I'm doing, so I'm kind of just feeling it out. Okay, I got my leads on there again. <laughs> this is a good example of, see how it says 80 kilo ohms? That's probably because I'm touching the casing. I may have to dive in there to take these readings again. Okay, so I got my three readings. So basically, if you go pin 1, 2, and 3, I took readings from pin 1 and 2, 2 and 3, and then 3 and 2. So you should get three readings, and your biggest reading of the three will be your common winding. So you go across from the common, it will be right here, 3.7. The smallest reading is going to be your run winding between common and run. They go opposite from each other. And then the medium reading will be your start winding between common and start. That one was 2.1. So this is what a good compressor looks like. My compressor is not bad. And usually, uh, you might be off by like one or two, but typically it'll be right on. Your start and run windings, these two, will equal your common winding. So 2.1 plus 1.6 does equal 3.7. My compressor is perfectly fine. Sometimes you'll start reading these, and between your common and run, you'll have OL, that means somewhere over here, the winding has melted or broken off and it's literally open. There's no continuity between that winding and of course your compressor is not gonna work. You need a new compressor. Another thing you can do, that's checking for an open. If you're, one of your compressor windings are open, another thing you should check for is if your compressor is shorted to ground. And if it is shorted to ground, your readings are gonna be way off too. But another easy way to check that though is all three of those pins should have on a good compressor should not have any continuity to ground 
So if you make a little scratch mark on top of your compressor, this is how I like to do it. Or you can just put your meter lead on the pipe or just on the casing. Put a little scratch mark on top of your compressor. Put one lead on there. And one lead on each of the compressor pins. See how I have zero? Nothing, nothing. I accidentally touched the casing over there. So my compressor is good. But if you do have continuity or resistance between any of those pins and your compressor casing, then your compressor is shorted to ground. Well guys, and that's how you check your compressor. It was kind of a pain in the butt to get the wires off. So really, I mean, what you could do is just trace your wires where they go to in the contactor. Take those, disconnect those wires and just check resistance at the wires instead of the compressor. Sometimes it could be a faulty reading though. I mean, if you have a burnt out wire or a broken wire, it'll be OL when really the compressor itself is not. So if you do get an OL on one of the compressor wires, then I would still make sure to go down there and confirm that the compressor is really bad by doing the tests at the pins themselves, not just the wires. And that is all I had for compressor checking for you. If you do have any more questions about how to check it, or maybe I missed something, do feel free to add or ask in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time.